welcome to Ecoholics. Today we are going to understand a very important growth model which was given by Joan Robinson. Uh, when we talk about Professor Joan Robinson, we have a very interesting thing to talk because she was one of a very prominent economists uh, around that time and even she was quite close to winning Nobel Prize and which is why the growth model and the various growth aspects that she has given are quite interesting and quite new and uh, quite important for us as students to understand. After Harrodoma model and uh, Robert Solo's model, Joan Robinson's growth model is quite important from the exam point of view also. So today we are going to summarize this model and we are going to understand the very simplistic nature of this model in a very interesting way. So let's move about learning the Robinson's growth model. Now when we talk about Joan Robinson's growth model, firstly we need to understand what exactly was the prominence of this growth model. So she had written a book which was accumulation of capital. Now from a very initial point of view when we start uh, understanding economics, we start with classical approach, then we go for Keynesian approach and then post Keynesian approach. So there are these different approaches that are present in economics and then of course it reaches to other, other approaches also. Here, Joan Robinson had uh, specifically emphasized on accumulation of capital because accumulation of capital since the very beginning from any growth point of view is very important for, for the purpose of investment, for the purpose of return on investment, for the purpose of growth in the economy, for the purpose of um, uh, let's say structural development in the economy. Accumulation of capital holds uh, really high importance and so the book published that was in 1956 was very very um, reflecting upon the true nature of economics and economic growth. Now it reflected also upon the working of a pure capitalist economy and that was known as the Robinson's growth model. Now let's understand what exactly were the determinants or elements in growth model given by Robinson. So the growth model which was given by Robinson was actually it propagated from that era where um, she was known as the propagator of post Keynesian economics also. So there were various elements that were different from Keynesian economics um, but similar from the point of view of classical economics. However, still there were a variety of things that were quite different in nature of the of how the model was constructed, right? So later, even the formalization of equations which was done by Kenneth K. Kurihara uh, was a collaboration of her model along with Kurihara's mathematical approach to make the model quite sensible and uh, approachable, right? Now let's understand the major assumptions that were given in the Robinson's growth model. So for an economy, for understanding any type of growth in the economy, firstly we understand that there is laissez-faire, uh, there is laissez-faire closed economy. So the economy is based on the free trade type of a model and the economy is closed which means that there is no external trade and whatever goods and services are being traded is an internal economic affair. Then the second thing is the factors of production. So to make the model simplistic and realistic and approachable, the uh, factors of production are taken to be two, that is capital and labor. Then the next thing is technical progress or technological progress. Usually in economic growth models, we often take the technological progress to be constant or neutral. What does this mean? That it does not mean that there is no technological progress or there is um, no technology 
often students think that when we say that there is technological progress it basically means that there is no technology at all but that's not true this basically this sentence basically means that the change or the fluctuation that is happening in the economy is usually constant or neutral so there are there are no major fluctuations that are happening in the technical aspect or technological aspect and which is why the progress is steady right then the next one is that there are only two classes now economy when is divided into two classes it often makes sense for us to note and understand how are the uh, how is the market going to function what is the type of goods and services that are going to be produced who is going to be the producer who is going to be the consumer what is going to be consumed and what is going to be saved all of that becomes quite uh, easy to understand from the uh, perspective of a person who is reading the paper or who is reading the dissertation or the thesis and which is why in this growth model also there are two classes that are given the workers and the entrepreneurs which basically means the labor class and the property owners uh, and among these two classes the whole national income is being distributed now then now the national income is being distributed so what do they do what what these two classes are doing of their incomes so it's stated by robinson in the model that the workers save nothing workers save nothing means if you say that why the income is being including the consumption along with the savings now if the wor workers are not saving anything which means that the whole income is being consumed so basically here what we are talking about is that the workers save nothing or the workers are consuming whatever that they are earning this is also one important reason why they are consuming the whole of the income or most of their income because the income is quite meager right so they, they spend their wage income on consumption and so the property owners or the entrepreneurs are going to consume nothing now practically this is not possible you are going to consume something from your income that you are generating however this is according to the model for the simplicity of the model to understand and make the model more accessible more understandable right so the entrepreneurs are supposed to consume nothing and save everything now usually when we talk about saving everything we are talking about saving equals to investment and that investment gives rise to more amount of capital accumulation which is basically the highlight of this particular model so the more amount of capital accumulation is going to happen in the economy the more investments are going to happen and the more investments that are going to happen the more further more ca capital accumulation is also going to happen then there is no change in the price level so there is basically here we are talking about is inflation price level general price level so there are no such inflationary trends and saving is a function of profit okay now after these assumptions let's come to the point where we understand the final summarization of the model what exactly the model is trying to suggest so now the entrepreneurs or the property owners total profit and the workers total wages whatever wages are going to be given to the workers that will be constituted as the net national income right so now this whole sentence simply is going to be expressed in this equation now if you look at this equation py equals to wn plus pi pk looks quite confusing and you probably are not going to recollect anything at all however if you know if you know the concept if you know that we are just talking about that entrepreneurs are going to be including the total profit and the workers are going to be including the total wages and that is going to constitute the total national income then this 
interpretation is going to be easy. So now let's understand in the very easy way the equation that Robinson has given is a very important equation that we start the whole model from. So here y is the net national income. So this y over here capital Y is the net national income and it has been multiplied by P. Now what is this P? P is here the average price of the output. You can also refer to P as the price level, right? So P over here is multiplied by Y. Take national income multiplied by the price level of the output. We talk about GDP. So this can be referred to as national income or net national income also. It can also be referred to as the net national output. Now what is it equal to? It is equal to W multiplied by N. Now W over here is the wages, right? The rate of wages. So the money wage rate is W which is multiplied by N. Now who is earning these wages? The number of labor. So N is the number of labor who is earning the wages. So that becomes your wage bill plus pi. Pi is the profit. So pi is the gross profit rate, the rate of profit that is earned every year. So that that is the symbol pi. P of course is the price level and multiplied by K. Now K is the amount of capital that has been utilized. So when you multiply all of this, this becomes the total profit. So which is why this equation PY equals to WN plus pi PK. This is a very important equation which often appears in the examination also that um, when you define Robinson's equation or when you are looking at the equilibrium equation or the uh, steady state equa uh, equation, you often refer to this equation, right? So this is the short summary of the growth model given by John Robinson. We are going to be explaining various such more difficult models to you and bring to you various other economic concepts. So stay tuned to Ecoholics. Thank you.